Esther chapter number 5, you can read in verse number 1, the Bible says, Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so, and it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. And so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the good testimonies how you've impacted people's lives, how you've blessed, and how you've helped them. God, we're certainly thankful for the good singing. Lord, our hearts do go out to the family this young man took his life. I pray for that family. Lord, you know all about it. And God, I pray you'd minister grace. And I pray, Lord, you said in the Word of God, you're the God of all comfort. I pray you'd comfort that family in the midst of this tragedy. God, I pray for any of that family that doesn't know you, that, Lord, they'd come to know you before it's everlasting too late. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd help us from the Word of God. Lord, we're needy people. We live in a needy land. And, God, we live in a day where we long to see you high and lifted up, see revival break out, see sinners saved by the good grace of God, see the saved get help and strength and be lights to this dark and depressed world. Now, Father, use uh, the Word of God tonight, uh, Lord, to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. May it enlighten our minds and our hearts to thy truths. And God, may we truly leave out of here different than we came in. Lord, I realize many of your people have worked hard this week, worked hard this day. Lord, I pray that God, as they have found themselves in the house of God, Lord, they'd find a refreshing from God, they'd find strength from God, and they'd certainly get help from God. Lord, you know our down sitting, our uprising, you know what we stand in need of. So, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Speak to the hearts of your people. Glorify your namesake. Be with all of our prayer requests. Touch Miss Janet. Help her. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things before we get to the message. I want you to notice, first of all, the royal apparel. We find in verse number 1 that Esther put on her royal apparel. Now, if you are a student of the Bible, you know that Esther was just a fair maid in the land, and the former queen, Vashti, uh, had a little character about herself. Uh, uh, Ahasuerus, the king, had put on a big feast, and the feast had went on some days, and a lot of... Uh, 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 those that were there had gotten in a big drunken stupor and he wanted Vashti to put on uh, 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 her uh, apparel and come out and present herself before that drunken crowd uh, and she flat out refused. Uh, now you you got to understand uh, 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 this was before cell phones. Uh, this was before uh, 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 CNN and Fox News. Uh, this was before women even had rights. Back in those days, women were considered property. Uh, and by her refusing the king, even though she's the queen, uh, sure, her life could have been taken from her. Well, Ahasuerus was wroth. He was very mad. Uh, he did not have her stone, but he did take her away from being queen. And so then there was a decree put out before all the land, all the fair maidens come uh, 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 before the king, uh, and uh, they would choose the next queen, and Esther's the one that found grace in the eyes of the king. Uh, so Esther becomes the next queen. Uh, this is the first occasion uh, where Esther is queen uh, and she's coming before the king without him beckoning for her and she's got her royal apparel on. Uh, can I say something? We have a privilege and a standing invitation to come before our king. Uh, all the time he beckons for us. Uh, 
uh, uh, if we're low to come to Him, if we're high to come to Him, no matter what we're facing, uh, we can boldly come to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. Uh, but I'm interested in this royal peril. This is a picture of something. This royal peril pictures humility. And can I say, you'll never have a true audience with the king till you come before him humbly. Mm. It also represents holiness. Not just anybody could put on the royal apparel. It represents something uh, far above uh, what we really are worth. Uh, and can I say something? Uh, uh, the Lord said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The world doesn't know anything about holiness. Uh, but we have been robed in the righteousness of Christ. Uh, and if we'll get our sins under the blood of Christ, uh, uh, we can come before Him even in a state of holiness because He looks at us, He sees Himself. It represents humility. It represents holiness. But it also represents honor. You know why a lot of people don't pray? They've not been honorable. They've given the world and other things more of their attention than they have God. And now when it's time to come before God, they can't because they're not honorable. So we see the royal apparel. Notice, if you will, the reverence. Look again in verse number 1. The Bible says, Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. Notice the reverence she stood. She stood in reverence of the king. Mm -mm. Now we know to bow in reverence of him, but when the king is in his court and the king is uh, 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 on his throne, uh, uh, those before the court stand in reverence to him. He's the seated one, not us. And can I say he's on his throne? Do we stand in reverence of God? We ought to stand in reverence of him. You ought to make a stand for him in reverence of him. We see the royal apparel. We see the reverence. Notice the redemption. Look, if you will, again, verse number 2. The Bible says, And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. Can I say that's called grace? Huh? She wasn't beckoned for uh, she had no right to be there, uh, uh, but she's reverencing the king. She's in a royal apparel. Uh, he looks over, Brother Tim gets a glimpse at her, uh, and she finds grace in his sight. Uh, uh, can I say, hallelujah, aren't you glad? Uh, he looked our way one day, uh, and we found grace in the eyes of God, uh, and he redeemed us from what we used to be. Uh, uh, thank God for grace. Uh, we see the redemption. Uh, but then notice the reception in verse number 2. It said, And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the, the scepter. We see that she is received of him. You see, had he not held out the golden scepter to her, she would have been turned away. But yet, he held out the scepter to say, you have my attention. And then in verse 3 we find out he has her, she has his heart. Hmm? And can I say, my dear friends, there's never a time that you come before the throne of God that he doesn't reach out to you and he doesn't say, you, you have an audience with me. And you know why? Because you have his heart. He loved you, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in God should not perish uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, Brother James, we love Him because He first loved us. Uh, uh, what a blessing that uh, we understand the love of God because we know the Master. What a, what a privilege. Uh, we are received of Christ. Hmm? He came unto His own, His own received Him not, but as many as received Him to them gave He power to become the sons of God. We received Him because we have been received of Him. What a blessing. Uh, and so we see these wonderful truths here in the parallel between Esther and Ahasuerus and us and Christ. Uh, but I'm interested in that scepter. It said that mm, the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. I want to preach with God's help for just a couple minutes tonight on the scepter of the Savior. Now, you know what a scepter is, don't you? 
it's that long rod with usually a big bulb on the top of it and a lot of times they're golden and it's something the king holds and nobody else holds uh, and here we find Ahasuerus has this golden scepter and uh, I'm sure it was worth a pretty penny because he's the only one who had one and I'm sure it was uh, if not solid gold very close to it it was something that was very impressive uh, and it was one of these things that when the king uh, 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 wanted your attention and wanted to speak with you he would symbolize it by holding a scepter out to you and that meant you had an audience with him well, my dear friends what does that scepter represent two things power and authority I've got good news Revelation 19.6 says, The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Omnipotent means He has all power. Lord means He is the authoritative one. And He's more than just Lord. He's Lord of lords and King of kings. So He is the authoritative one and He is the all-powerful one. And when He looks to us and yields to us His scepter... We are recipients of His power uh, and His authority. Uh, uh, friend, I'm not here tonight under my name. Uh, I'm here tonight under His name. Uh, uh, we do not uh, uh, serve under our names. Uh, we serve under His name. Uh, hey, this is His church. Uh, we're under, under His authority. Uh, hey, uh, He's the one that has all power. Uh, we're powerless, uh, but through Him there's nothing we can't do. Uh, uh, it's all about Him. His power and His authority. Uh, so the scepter of the Savior, the power and authority from God that will propel us above our obstacles, propel us above our opposition, uh, propel us against uh, anything else that would hinder us, uh, and comes to us through Him. And so how do we get this power and this authority? Hmm. You remember when the Apostle Paul and some of the apostles were doing great miracles and, and there was a, a, a guy who was a, a, a really into witchcraft and he wanted to know what authority they did these things and he was wanting to become a Christian so he could have this power. Can I say there's a lot of people that want to be Christians because of the perks. Hmm? They want to know they can go to heaven when they die. That's a pretty big perk. It is. But here's the problem, Brother Clint. They, were, they don't want anything to do with the life now. They just want to make sure they don't have to die and go to hell. They want to go to heaven. They don't realize the life now is really heaven on earth. Huh? I'm having the time of my life now. Huh? Heaven's just cherry on top, the whipped cream on top, the ice cream on top, the cake. Huh? Are you listening? It's, it's a whole lot better knowing him now because now I have a peace that passes understanding uh, now I have joy unspeakable and full of glory uh, now I have hope when there is no hope uh, now I have help in the help uh, the one that's the helper from the hills uh, hey what a blessing to know him uh, hey if there was no heaven it'd still be worth being a Christian just for the life we have now uh, but how do we get the power? See, people want the perks. Do you ever wonder why people follow this faith healing crowd? Hmm? Really, if you can't see through that stuff, see me after church. I got a bridge I want to sell you. It's right down here that just got built. Huh? But there are people that fall for this stuff. And they prey on people. They prey on elderly people. It gives their social security checks to these guys that are multi-millionaires. And all they are are wizards. They're magicians. They get you sleight of hand and they do things to make people think they see something that really doesn't exist. You do know the hand is quicker than the eye. But why do people fall for that? Because they want the power behind it. They want to think, boy, if I could just lay hands on people and heal them. You know how I know that stuff isn't real? Because there's hospitals. You think if I had the power to heal people that I, I wouldn't be at the hospital 24-7 healing everybody comes in there? 
Hey, if there was really the gift of healing, do you think there would ever been a COVID-19 pandemic? Are you listening? But see, people want to buy the fantasy. Hmm? We live in the nasty now and now. You know the real power of God is when you're depressed beyond yourself and yet there's something wells up within you that causes you to get out of bed every day and punch your time clock uh, and to have some joy in your heart uh, and to tell others, uh, I found the real secret to life and His name is Jesus. That'll help you. Uh, let, me, let me help you something. Y'all do know work is a four-letter word, right? Does anybody really love working? But you got to work. Because if you don't work, you don't eat. I don't know about you, but I like to eat. Are you listening? Everybody has problems. What helps you through your problems is the peace of God. That's what they miss. They're wanting some kind of fantasy thing. So where really the power and the authority, my dear friends, is available and it's practical and it will help you in your life now and in the future, it'll cause you to get beyond things that normally would wreck you and it'll keep your life clean. So how do we get this power, this authority? Well, it's all right here in these verses. Can I say the, the power of God and the authority from God, it comes from being in the right place. Look at verse number 1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. What are you saying, preacher? You've got to be in the right place. She's in the inner court of the king's house. Had she not been there, she'd have never got the golden scepter pointed her way. Can I say? You've got to be in God's house to have His authority and to have His power. The Bible says, Moreover, in stewards it's required that a man be found faithful. The Bible said, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Whether or not you know this or not, God's house, God's church is His government on earth. God does not do anything outside His local church. Uh, God blesses and does everything through the inner workings of His church. Uh, so if you're going to have His authority, you've got to be with what He uses. Uh, and He uses His house, the church. But then it said the inner court. You can come to church and not get his power and not get his authority. You say, where's the inner court? That's where he's at. Hmm? Right. See, you've got to go beyond just getting to church. You've got to get to where he's at. Well, how do I do that? Well, you've got to pay attention to what he says in the preaching. You might have to get on your face in the altar. You might have to uh, 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 get with somebody and uh, 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 get something cleared up uh, so you can get to where he's at. Uh, 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 you might need to get saved. You might need to get uh, 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 in the choir. You might need to get uh, uh, behind one of these instruments up here. You might get, uh, hey, if you listen to what he says, he'll tell you where he's at. Uh, and as we said on Sunday, that fire that beckons, uh, he'll beckon you to where he's at. Uh, but you won't get his power and his authority till you get to where he's at at the inner court. Uh, if you've never heard that message I preached on our Holy of Holies, it's one thing to be in the sanctuary, the holy place. It's another thing to be in the most holy place. And that's where God met with them. Uh, and that most holy place, the Holy of Holies. My dear friends, if all you do is get inside the doors of the sanctuary, you don't get to where He's at. Mm, so you've got to be in the right place. You've got to be right where he's at. And you can get his authority and his power. Can I say secondly, if you're going to get the scepter of the Savior, if you're going to get the power and the authority of God, it comes with a purpose. Look with me in chapter 4. Just flip back a page. And I will say this unashamedly. 
One of the greatest messages I ever heard, I heard out of the book of Esther. Brother Mike Goodson preached on Run Mule Run. And if you've never heard that message, get Brother Randy run your copy of it. That is a powerful, powerful message. But in verse 14 of chapter number 4, look what the Bible says. Mordecai has come to Esther. And Mordecai has explained what is going on in the life of Israel or, or with the Jews. And here's what it says. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their, their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Uh, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Uh, and who know, knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Uh, there was a wicked man in the kingdom uh, uh, who hated the Jews uh, by the name of Haman. Uh, and Haman had set forth a decree on a certain day that all the Jews were going to die. Uh, Esther's a Jew. Uh, Esther has no idea. Uh, Esther hears that her uncle Mordecai, uh, he's, uh, 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 he's fasting and he's in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, and she's wondering why he's mourning uh, and she sends for Mordecai and he tells her uh, there's been a, a, a plot against the Jews uh, and they're going to die all Jews will die by a certain date uh, he said you'll probably be okay uh, but your people are going to be destroyed uh, he said who knows uh, this might be why God's let you become the queen uh, for such a time as this uh, can I say uh, his purpose uh, his power uh, his authority he comes with a purpose uh, and that purpose uh, is for sinners to be saved uh, uh, for Christ to be glorified and magnified uh, and for God's people uh, uh, to rise above the rudiments of this world uh, and to live as Christ under this world uh, comes with a purpose it's life or death see we don't think about it in those terms Every time we come to church, if somebody's lost and leaves lost, they leave out still dead in their sins. They weren't made alive spiritually. Every time we come to the house of God, if you don't get closer to God, you leave out a little more dead than when you came in. It's life or death. And we don't have revival. How many people within a stone's throw of this church are going to die and go to hell? Hmm. It's life or death. There is a purpose. Jesus came and died on the cross for a reason, to save sinners. The message of the church hasn't changed. It's still the good news that you don't have to die and go to hell. Jesus took your death. He took your hell. He took your sin. And He'll pay for your sins and He'll forgive you of your sins if you'll accept Him as Lord and Savior. And I say His power and His authority is not just handed out for us to just build big buildings and make a name for ourselves and build ministries. No, it's all about sinners being saved. It's all about Jesus being highly exalted. It comes with a purpose. It comes from being in the right place. But can I say, the scepter of the Savior, the power and authority of God comes at a price. She had to put on her royal apparel. I don't know about you. Try humbling yourself. By the time you get there, you get to thinking, I'm humble. And you lose it. Hmm. Try being holy in yourself. Hmm. We fail the grace of God every day. I got news for you. We fail the grace of God every hour of every day. Some of us every minute of every hour of every day. If we could have been holy, Christ wouldn't have had to went to the cross. And try being honorable. You might pull out some, pull off some of that, but you might not too. As soon as somebody cuts you off in traffic, you'll lose your honor. You see, you can't put on your royal apparel because you don't have anything to put on. But you've got to submit to Him and let Him don you with the royal apparel. That comes at a price. That comes admitting to him that you're not anything in yourself. Can I say? It comes at a price. She had to put on her pair. She had to be accepted of the king. You realize by her going without being beckoned for, she could have been taken out and stoned? She had to be accepted. 
I'm glad in Christ we're accepted. Amen. The blessed to be accepted in the beloved. Yes. But you know when he won't accept you? When you're full of pride? When you've got sin in your life? If you harbor iniquity in your life, he won't even hear your prayers. The cost of the peril. It cost her acceptance, but it also cost her her all. Look back in chapter number 4 again. Look at verse 16. Go and gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in, in, in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. She was willing to pay it all. She said, if I die, I die, but I'm going to die trying. I'm going to go before the king. Even though it's against the law, I'm going to go anyway. You just fast and pray. See, came at a price. Cost her her all. She was willing to die for it. You know why we don't have revival? We're not willing to have it. It's going to cost you your all. You've got to be willing to die for it. Not physically. Die spiritually. Crucify your flesh for it. Oh, we like revival meat. We like when we have Brother Greg, Brother Bobby come up. We love them. Good men of God. We love their personalities. We just don't want them to say anything that causes us to change. You see, I'm old enough to remember when revival meetings would go on two, three, four weeks. Go back there and talk to Aunt Lynn. Her daddy go preach a revival. We never know when he's coming home. They'd preach morning, and night, and baptize all day on Saturday. Never knew when he's coming home. Go to meet. It got over when God was done. Well, now we've got to schedule them six months in advance, and people get mad if I don't give them enough time to take their vacation so they can come. Well, bless God, don't let it go an extra night. We've got to go grocery shopping on that night. See, we really don't want revival. We want entertainment in the form of spirituality. We want personality behind the pulpit. We want good singing. We want to have a good time until our flesh gets tired and then we're done. Revival, you crucify your flesh. And I remember when revival... It wasn't about the personality behind the pulpit. You scared to death to breathe when that man of God mounted the pulpit. And he'd peel your hide off of you and you thanked him for it on the way out. Because he was right. But we don't want revival. Because it cost us something. We had no excuse. This last one, do you all realize I didn't take up an offering any night? Say, why, preach? I didn't feel led to. But the truth of the matter is, revival and having the power and the authority of God, it costs something. It will cost you more time in prayer. It will cost you more time in the Word of God, more time meditating on God, more time putting into practice what is being preached during the meeting. It will put a fear of God in your soul where you're scared for your loved ones who aren't saved and where you're scared for your neighbors who aren't saved. You, you get to uh, uh, so close to God that not only will you hear the golden angels sing, but man, you'll feel the flames of hell. You're scared to death because you're standing between sinners and eternal life. Power and authority of God is available, but it costs you something comes at a price but it comes with a promise look at verse 3 I'm done what it says then said the king unto her what wilt thou queen Esther what is thy request it shall be given to thee to the half of the kingdom you know what he did he gave her a blank check she was in the right place she had a purpose. The purpose came at a great price and she paid it. 
And then the power and authority of the kingdom came to her with promise. Said you can have up to half the kingdom. Do you realize that in Christ we've been made joint heir to his throne? That means everything Christ owns, we own. Now, if you ever let that light in on your soul, you won't be having no little juniper, pity part, juniper tree pity parties anymore. You know why you don't see that you own all that he owns? Because you don't have his power and his authority in your life. She could have had half the kingdom, but she didn't want half the kingdom. She wanted souls. And my dear friends, too many of God's people would take half the kingdom and let people die and go to hell. But when it is such a burden unto you for souls, you'll not only have Him, His power, and His authority, but you'll have your heart's desire. You'll see revival, and you'll see souls get saved. So I wonder tonight, what's the savior, savior scepter worth to you? You willing to have it? So preach this is Wednesday night crowd, I know. Can't preach this on Sunday morning. Half that crowd's looking at me cross-eyed by the second point anyway. They aren't going to pay the price. They're not even coming back Sunday night. You want his power? You want his authority in your life? You want to see what Christ can really do? Get to the right place. Get to where he's at. Get a purpose. One preacher said in the 60s, the greatest burden is having no burden. When was the last time you had a burden so much for sinners to be saved you lost sleep? It was the last time the most important thing in the course of your day was calling out people's name before God and telling them, God, you need to save them. If you don't save them, they're going to die and go to hell. You've got to have a purpose. That's what gets God's attention. Not all our little good deeds. He's not impressed. He's the one who flung the stars out there on nothing. You think our little good deeds impress him? You know what impresses him? When you go beyond yourself and you get a burden for others. And then you're willing to pay the price. Lord, whatever it takes. Then you'll get the promise. There's nothing like when God puts a promise in your soul. Because it's impossible for God to lie to you. Read the rest of the book. The Jews got saved. The enemy of the Jews was destroyed on the very thing he wanted to destroy Jews on. And Esther and Mordecai and the whole family was blessed from then on. Hence much their history is still recorded in the life of the Jews. I wonder tonight. Will we get serious enough with God that we have his true power? It's been a long time since I've seen the true power of God fall on a crowd. But I sure would like to see it. There's nothing like the power of God. Because there's nothing that can refute it. I mean, he spoke, let there be light. Boom, there was light. Huh? Satan's been trying to imitate it for 6,000 years and can't even come close just trying to tell you the power of God's where it's at you can have his authority and his power in your life if you'll just get to where he wants you to be we ought to strive for the presence and the power of God in our life like never before friend look around this world is in a chaotic state you go to the shopping centers and the shelves are empty because it's sitting out in the ocean it's all by design every week they're coming up with different things that's going to kill us it's all by design we're all headed toward the antichrist my dear friend the good news for us that are saved we'll be out of here but what about all the folks that aren't ready 
why don't we get some of the power of God on us and start seeing folks get saved? What greater time to live than right now at the brink of the coming of the Lord? And What a time to be revived. Will we have the power of God? Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, you come. Miss Renee, you come. Friend, if you're going to ever have it, now's the time to get it. We don't have much time left. Will we have the power of God, the scepter of the Savior? Will we seek to have it? The power, the authority of God in our lives. Folks are coming. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, I know in myself, lies no good thing. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. I'm glad for the scriptures tonight. And I'm glad that you'll withhold no good thing from your people. God, I pray you'd give us a burden for sinners. I pray that, Lord, we'd get on the same page with God. That, God, we desire what you desire. We long for what you long for. God, we'd see your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, I pray you'd do work in our hearts. Lord, we all know people that aren't ready to meet you. God, give us your presence and your power in our life so much that you will not be denied in their lives. God, do work. Save sinners. Send revival these days. Help your people, Lord, to see the importance and the need and then to pay the price. God, do something significant in our lives that impacts other people's lives. And God, will not fail to give you the glory and the praise and the honor for it all. Lord, maybe somebody tonight needs to put on the royal apparel. Maybe somebody tonight needs to get a burden. Maybe somebody tonight, you've dealt with them about paying the price. Maybe somebody's been on the outside looking in, need to get to the inner court. God, just do work tonight. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.